Foundation date of the Famosa was 1966. That means that the cooperative at this point was created, but Wormeldorsch, so this building, was not in the Vamoselle at this point. We just entered in 1988, and to, until 1988 we were independent here. And uh, yes, in 1921 there was a certain man called Paul Faber, who, was in, who lived in Grevenmacher and who created there the big cave. And uh, he, had, he was the founder of this idea of Ramosel. So in his memory, we also call our uh, Cremont Paul Faber. So if somebody tells you about Paul Faber, it's the Cremont of the Ramosel. Here in this room we have 12 tanks of 60,000 liter each one. On your left side there, uh, on your right side, um, we have uh, the 20,000 liter tanks, in the middle 15,000 and on the other side 10,000 liter tanks. We have this difference in size because we have different grape kinds and for example the Pinot Noir grape we have not as much as now the Riesling or the Alpine grape or Auxerrois. And uh, yes, therefore we have difference in size. Here in this inox tanks we have the first fermentation. For cremo production you need two fermentations. One in the inox tanks and one in the bottles. In Germany, for example, you have one in the inox tank and one in another tank, so not in the bottles. And for Cremor production, it's like in France, you have it in the bottles. So, um, yeah, first fermentation means natural fermentation and also controlled fermentation, which means that just the natural sugar, which is, to, uh, which is um, in the juice, makes products a chemical reaction and then turns into alcohol. So we are not uh, adding any sugar or something like that, that's even prohibited. So you aren't allowed to do it. And um, controlled fermentation, that means that uh, we always have to, uh, we always need to have a certain degree of temperature inside. Um, and that's always around 21 degrees. When it's too cold, we have a whole climate system here. And when this climate system here is working, then in the whole building it's really, really Cold, so <laughs> because all the energy is then here. Um, yes, these tanks are cleaning up fully automatically. Um, yeah, in contrast to the old tanks, which I will show you also later. There, you have to climb in and to clean everything by hand. They come here with the blue elevator, and then they are into the machine. And this machine turns the boxes upside down so that the grapes can fall directly into these holes. You can see. And then under us are directly the press machines, which means then the grape, grapes are falling directly into the press machines. I will show you them in a minute. And then there you can see the big washing machine and for hygienic reasons we just wash them once and then the wine grocer can take them back to the wine yards again. Here in Bourbonnage you have the specialty that we are not going downstairs but upstairs, so which means we are here on the third floor. And, um, it's just because of the Mosul, which means that every year or nearly every year we have floods and therefore we don't uh, build cellars because then the Mosul would be into the cellars directly and that's too much of loss and risk for us and therefore we build everything up there. That's the reason why. These are pneumonatic press machines, which means that there is kind of balloon inside and then we put air inside and it grows, it grows, grows and grapes then are pressed on the outside, on the wall they're yeah, just pressed like this, and very, very softly. It's just uh, one bar and a half or something like that. Because we don't want that uh, the grains and the stems are destroyed, because there is a bitterness inside them, and when this bitterness comes into the juice, 
then the holy place is destroyed for a criminal. Usually there are standing a lot of new bottles. We always use new bottles. That's because um, when we would use recyclated bottles and there is damage in the bottle, then they would explode even earlier during second fermentation. And therefore just new bottles. So there, this machine takes the bottles and then places it on the other machine. And then there, bottles are washed from the inside once. And then here we are filling in uh, first fermentation wine. So this wine from the inox tank. Here we put in the yeast and the liquid sugar for second fermentation. And here we put on a Kronokochgen. That's like a, a cork of the cola. Mm -hmm. There, like, yeah, iron thing. And we don't <laughs> want that there uh, is air entering into the bottle so that the chemical reaction can uh, work. And here then are usually standing two people we then take these bottles by hand and then place them into these uh, iron boxes, like for second fermentation in the horizontal position. So that the yeast is then on the, bottle of, on the bottom of the bottle because we want to take it out afterwards. How we take it out I will show you in a moment. Um, this machine, when it's working on top, 3000 bottles an hour. So, taking this by hand, a lot of work. And it's really noisy here because of this machine. Small machine, but usually I explain everything on top when the machine is working. Because it's... Ooh. Yeah, and working here it's not very nice. Students, every time when uh, somebody says so, you have to go upstairs. No! <laughs> because taking eight hours a day just like this. Because here you can't make a break. Because if you make a break, then you have four. Because <laughs> three times an hour. Automatic tent. <laughs> <coughs> Everybody here? Yeah. Okay, so here the bottles are, uh, no, here we are with our turning device machine. So here bottles are turned. We are turning the bottles for a whole week fully automatically, which means that they are coming in in the horizontal position, like in, first, uh, in second fermentation. <coughs> and then we turn them the first two days. Every six hours, 25 deg degrees, left or right, that depends on how they put everything. And then uh, the next five days, we are turning them every two to three hours, 25 degrees again. But also we are mo making movement like this, so that at the end of the week, bottles are standing upside down. Which means that then the whole yeast is in the neck of the bottle. Because we want to take this yeast out, because when you let it in, it it has a disgusting taste, really. You can't drink it, it's blood. And here is also a place where most of the bottles are exploding, which means that when they go to get together during the rotation, then they explode. So, here, you can see that we already have 49 movements. Usually we have uh, 52 until they are standing upside down. Then here you see if it's turning left or right, and then here you see the hours and the minus left up to the next movement. So you will see this turning uh, in the movie because they told me that the movie is working. So again, okay, then we could see it now afterwards. So here then is our free, uh, frozen machine, which means that bottles coming here still upside down. We place them with the neck into an, uh, an ice liquid. And there we cool the bottles down by minus 25 degrees. So the neck of the bottle like this is frozen, so that the yeast is frozen inside the ice. Mm -hmm. And then there, from there to there we have about 20-25 minutes. And then there the machine turns the bottles on the right way so that we can take out this ice and the yeast. And how this is uh, done I will show you. So then here is a machine where we open the bottles. There inside it's a little knife and then we open this Kronokorken and then because of the pressure inside the bottle the ice and the ease are coming out. Mm -hmm. And then they fall into this box there and then we throw it away so we aren't use it anymore. And then here uh, it's not so much which comes out because of the pressure because we cooled down the bottles and then uh, yeah it's that not much of Primor comes out. Here then you will see in the movie too we have like a yellow liquid it's called liqueur that's a special secret mixture of the house, which we put in into every cremo, and uh, every cremo has its own liqueur. And uh, it just defines if the cremo is dry or half dry, and it gives the cremo its special note.
You can see this machine, there we put on the cork, so the real cork. We just use natural corks and uh, yeah, from Portugal, Spain, etc. And then here, um, we also, I, oh yes, and you can't move this by hand, so it really needs huge pressure. And then we pulled on the whistle, or is it whistle? I don't know what. <laughs> whistle, this iron thing, no? It's American English, I think, I don't know. But we call it muesli. And it's just uh, this iron thing to put on that the cork is not coming out. And uh, also, in earlier times, they put this on there. It was just the iron thing here. And in earlier times, they put this onto the cork so that the rats and mouses uh, could not eat the cork. First of all, we put on this golden hat. And then there are two little black lines in the middle. And then the laser of the next machine knows, oh, I have to put it like this. And then it puts this like this. And here, also, that everything is straight and, and every time the same. Um, and then there are standing two people, usually, who are controlling the bottles again and then putting them into boxes. And then you can drink. So now you have the Cremo. It's the Cremo Brut. It's made of 50% of Auxerrois grapes, 30% of Pinot Blanc, and the rest is Riesling. So, um, yeah, it's Cremo Brut. That's the normal one we always give to tastings. It's the one uh, you always take to receptions and everything. It's the one you usually use for every occasion because it's, yeah, it's pleasing and it's for everybody. It's a bit, uh, yeah. So, uh, it's a uh, full body, harmonious as uh, a pleasing cremo. So, now, uh, on every glass, you normally you see this sun, moon, and stars. Yes. And sun, moon, and stars is just a symbol of our cremo. And it just wants to tell you that you can drink the cremo for every occasion, day and night. I don't know. 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 I